Welcome to Sculpture Studios. Now, this project spans all the way back to the beginning of 2020. And now that businesses are slowly sort of back up and running here in the UK, it's video time. We've been contacted by Simon Stell and his team from LCF Law, who have asked us to create a couple of life-size cheetahs for their Leeds office. We've put together a little mock-up design here of how we envisage these cheetahs looking, so the client can choose from their company colour palette for the final chosen designs. Right, what are we up to here, Jessica? We are grading up this cheetah model uh, for a large-scale sculpture we'll be making of a cheetah, and currently just scaling all the images up. This has all been scanned in, so we can project this on this acetate paper. The clients currently ask for two of these models at this moment in time. They might ask for more further down the line, but this means it's going to be polycarved, a detailing of clay over the top, silicon rubber mould with a fiberglass jacket, and then two fiberglass casts. Let's uh, let's pop into the studio, shall we? Yeah. <laughs> right here we are, Liam. Please bring on the uh, the specimen. This is what we're creating today. Oh, cat's out of the bag. We're going to be making this cheetah. Um, we've gridded him up on a scale drawing. He's got about a metre tall. He's going to have a rock at the bottom. And uh, he's about 600 from the back of his bum to the front of his face. And uh, about 400 wide total. We're using this block and we're going to measure up the correct sizes so that we can use a hot wire, zing this front end off, save this for another job. And uh, the way we're going to project this, Kevin wants to uh, bring this in here. Thank you very much, Kev. We're going to be using an overhead projector, nice and simple. Bring it completely onto the, onto the side. <laughs> and, um, and we're going to block this out. Aiden's currently away on holiday, but we know he loves a bit of carving. So what we're going to do, we're going to block this out, cut the cubist form using hot wires, perhaps use the hot wire table, because that's going to be nice and, nice and neat. And uh, make sure we leave a little bit of extra material on there so that Aiden's got something to carve. That's it, let's crack on. Everybody always wants to know where we get things like the hot wires from, and all I can say is we had these specially built for us. We can turn the voltage up and down depending on how long the wire is and how fast or slow we want to cut. All this envy, green looks good on you. We're blocking out the cubist form of the cheetah from the side on profiles and the top plan view, and this will form the basis of the shape for Aiden to start working on after his little getaway. On holiday, vacation, I know. But he is the boss, he can literally do what he likes. Here he is, fresh off the ship, the big man himself. And now basically, just start carving with the uh, little trusty wire brush. There we go. Carving by hand, Aiden's home away from home, and not a computer-aided machine cutter in sight. Using nail and wire brushes, the shape is honed down, and Aiden makes sure to refer back to the source material as much as possible. It's always handy having an actual 3D model sitting in front of you that you can directly compare to, as opposed to just concept images. Once Aiden's happy with the body shape, the surface is sanded down to remove any polystyrene beading, and we go over with a soft water-based plaster mix. 
This isn't particularly strong or for long-term use on a sculpture going outside or anything like that, but simply used for us to sand down to achieve a good surface finish before a mould is created. Here Ruth has been blocking out a rough polystyrene form for the rock base, and much like the face, this is going to be detailed with a layer of clay. So here we have Aiden with the cheetah head. We've got the model here, which is what we've based the, the body on. But as this is kind of a, a slightly artier piece, we find, think the head's a little bit small and the client agrees. So we're referring to some concept images. Um, and do you want to talk us through your thought process here, Aiden? Uh, yeah. Um, unusually, I'm doing some clay sculpting as regards to just polystyrene. Find put, putting the clay on, it's very forgiving. You add it and take it away, add it and take away, and it can go on and on. Uh, but I'm actually quite enjoying this this time, so and I think it is getting there. So I think it's a correct way to go. Plus, we can add a bit of texture to the whole surface uh, and see it as one piece. So, yeah, I'm enjoying it. Compared to polystyrene carving, which the majority of which is just taking away the material, you can add it back on, but uh. It's a bit tricky then adding a bit more clay onto the piece. This is a, a slightly different craft. But once we've got this to where Aiden's happy with it, we'll send a shot to the client. The client can take a look, make any amendments if they like something in particular changed. But as Aiden said, we're going to go over with clay, a very, very thin couple of millimetres across the whole surface, create a texture. And like this model here, we're going to have these spots added as flats so that once it's all painted up in the various colours that the client wants the cast to be, the spots will show up different to the texture and uh, it will make it a cross between a realistic piece and a slightly artier piece. It's looking very nice so far. So we've printed off a couple of concept images, a few more images from the internet. As a, as a choice bit of reference. Amendments are being made. Aiden's moved the ears up, sharpened everything, sharpened the nose so that it's less of a flat, less of a round, making sure the fur's coming down the face, tweaking the position of the, the eyes, and adding these little grooves that run down the markings on the face. And step by step, it's gradually getting much more to where we want it. And we'll send a, a finished shot to the client, see if they're happy with it. If any amendments need to be made, that's the joy of clay. Once everything's finished, a mould can be made. We'll get, keep you up to date with that step as well. What? <laughs> <laughs> any any cat-related jokes? No, nothing oh, here. Spot well, you on. spot on. Clay detailing nearing completion, we've sent some images and a short video clip over to the client and this is so they can confirm they're happy with everything before we crack on with the mould making. When creating a mould for this, we obviously have a lot of detail to achieve, and a slightly awkward in-out area around the front legs, so we're creating this from silicon rubber. Going over with liquid layers first, then building up in heavier, more buttery layers, a silicon mould makes sure we achieve all of the clay work, and creates a mould that we can use to make more than just one cast. With the potential for more models further down the line, it's worth having a high quality mould at this stage, so the client can simply push the button on having another batch created. After all of the rubber has gone on and set, we give this a glass fibre jacket, so each rubber mould piece when it's taken apart in segments, retains the correct shape in its fiberglass dish. 
You may be wondering why our cheetah is suddenly lame with his front legs removed. Sorry kid, the cab was rabid, had to put it down. Now that's so we can work and create the moulds in the cast for this area separately, and add it to the rest of the shape later. The body pieces would be impossible to cast and remove from the mould with the legs attached, so it's just another part of mould making to create breakpoints in the sculpture like this. The fiberglass jacket and the rubber mould pieces are all taken apart via split lines that we created during the moulding process. We go in with a gel coat of resin for the initial layer of the cast, backed up with multiple layers of glass fibre. The cheetahs will be strong and durable, but relatively lightweight for their size. This means that one person could easily pick one up and move it to a new location in the office, as well as the fact that they can endure all of the law and justice that's going to be smacking around that office workspace. We're going round and cleaning up any extra material and sharp edges on each of the fiberglass pieces, by which case everything can start being extracted from the moulds to begin assembly. I mean, extraction's sometimes easier said than done, particularly with awkward shapes like this. We've got to make sure we get the rubber off in one piece without splitting it to make sure we can use this again. You got to punch it out, Liam. Go on. <laughs> Go on. Get it. Oh, that's lovely. That that's the thing. It's a silicon all collected in one piece. Yes, so that fiberglass piece has to come out. Oh. Don't be oh, a bum bag, just do it. <laughs> Helpful Jess is filming. Watching you do the hard work. Please don't rip, please don't rip, please don't rip. There we go, simple as that. <laughs> the casts now need to be lined up, tacked together from the outside in the correct position, so we can reach inside the job to join everything together along the split lines. We're using glass fibre on the inside, the same as the cast themselves, for a really strong join. The advantage of having a nice wide rock base on the bottom of the sculpture is that when we turn the cast upside down, we've now got a wide hollow base to be able to work into, but reaching through the entire body of the cheetah to do the internal seam lines is a bit of a task. Might have to choose the person with the longest arms to do that, and no bulging biceps, so that's me out of the question. When the seam lines on the inside have been secured with glass fibre, we go over the outside of the body with car body fillers to make up all of the detail along the seam lines. This all then needs to be sanded down and reapplied, dremels used to make sure all of the detail is fully back in place and no brake lines are visible. And when we're happy, it's then on to the painting. Like many of our fiberglass sculptures, we're going over with 2K car body paints. These are strong, durable paints that adhere well to the fiberglass surface, with a primed base layer going on first. the cheetahs so far. Just had a little phone call with Simon as we've sent him some images discussing whether to keep these bases in the corporate company logo colours or whether to make the cheetahs stand out a little bit, have these decorated like a, a kind of natural rock. Did a quick whip round the office, we photoshopped an image to send to him so they could have a look how this might look and uh, the consensus was yeah let's go ahead and decorate them so these are going to be painted now in a kind of natural rock colour. We'll send him a final image. He's approved a semi-sheen finish. And, uh, and then we've just got to work out how they're going to get them all the way up to Leeds. So we'll organise some transportation for them. A 
little airbrush work just to finish the project off, Jess is going round both bases, creating a theatrical textured look with a light sandy stone rock texture. The cheetahs are being left completely as a solid block colour, so no extra detail needed on the spots themselves. Now the sculptures are all complete, they're ready for collection. I say collection, a little bit of a break between the completion date of this project and the delivery, namely a four month break during the UK lockdown, but now they're finally up north in their new home. So I did a little bit of poking around, I mean research, as to why the cheetah and the lore of the jungle, is what appears on the LCF website, featuring a cheetah on their homepage. Hopefully this project, and hopefully this project video, inspires more work for LCF in the future, perhaps for their other branch offices in Ilkley, Bradford and Harrogate. Thank you very much indeed to Simon Stell and the rest of his team in Leeds for commissioning this project with us, and we really hope you've enjoyed watching the build process from start to finish. Thanks again must go to all of our subscribers out there for coming back for more and more projects, and hopefully we can continue pushing forward through the rest of 2020. Please feel free to leave any comments below, as they're always appreciated, and hit the subscribe button and the notification bell for our latest videos. You can like Sculpture Studios on Facebook, and follow at Aidan Hines on Twitter, and for more of our work, visit sculpturestudios.co.uk. Thank you very much for watching.